Hi, it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail, and it's What's Up Wednesday. You're going, but wait a minute, it's Thursday. Well, What's Up Wednesday was yesterday, and I got it up on my blog, but I didn't get the video done because, well, those of you who have children would understand. The uh, flip that I used to, to videotape is actually my daughter's, and she hid it from her brother. Well, now nobody knows where it is. So now I have my own flip. So anyway, we'll find it eventually, but I tried using the regular video camera and after like two or three hours of fiddling around with it and getting extremely frustrated, I said, well, this isn't working. So I got my own flip today. Yay. So anyway, what I've got to show you today is a new kind of paper bag album. At least I haven't seen one like this and it is a flip album. So let me show you how the pages flip. What you have is you have a little pocket down at one end that you can put a photo mat in. And then in the body of the bag is an even larger photo mat that slips. Two of those fit in there. Then it flips up like so. And then they alternate which side the little pocket's on. So on this next page, the pocket's on this side. You flip the pocket's on this side and so on and so forth. If you wanted this to be to where all your bags are vertical, you could just put them into your um, your album with the pockets all down at the bottom and that works great too. So let me show you how I went about making this, um, this type of paper bag album. You're gonna use your typical paper bags. You can get the ones at the grocery store. These happen to be the ones that I get at Michael's. I am currently looking for an online source because I know there's a lot of you that don't have access to a Michael's. So I'm looking for an online source to find some paper bags that are a reasonable price, ship internationally, all that kind of good stuff. Um, but I like to use the ones from Michael's are a little nicer quality, but the ones from the grocery store work just fine. So your typical paper bag, it's got the bottom little flap. When we make, uh, when I make a, a paper bag al album, I usually fold this up. This becomes kind of a short page flap. The pocket is here. Well, with this one, you're going to leave the pocket, uh, the flap the way it is, fold it up. You're going to turn it over and you're going to fold it back on itself going the other way. So then you end up with a T. Okay. What you're going to then do is fold it back the way it started with. Fold where you just made that fold. So basically those T, that T then folds up onto the body of the bag. Like so. It looks like that. Pocket, pocket. All you're going to need to do is adhere this down on each side, which I happen to have right here is one where it's stuck down. I use my ATG gun. You can use any kind of, um, way of here adhering it that you want. Now typically when I'm like for instance when I made this album, I like my paper that's on the body of my bag to slip down inside that pocket. Just a little it only goes down about quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch. And so I put the paper on the paper bag itself before I hook this down just so that it kind of goes down inside that pocket. It's it's a little finished detail. I'm kind of you know that way. But anyway, um you can do that your, that way, or you can do it however way you want, because you know what? It's your album. Um, but that's how I do it. I then also cover this little flap here at the end. And then I have, these are four by six photo mats that slip inside that pocket. So I want to make sure I keep this nice and tight to the edge based on the bag, my bag size. In here I have four and a half by seven and a half photo mats on the inside. You will need to adjust your dimensions based on the size of your paper bag. So then in order to attach this in, rather than punching holes in the bag here, which isn't as stable, what I've done is I've made a little flange out of chipboard. And this one happens to be five inches by two inches. The depth is determined by your paper bag though. The depth of this gusset right here, you wanna take that depth plus about half an inch. So, and this um, flange is gonna fit down inside that gusset. Now I've already punched holes in this one. Typically, I wouldn't do that until I've covered my chipboard flange um, with paper first before I punch the holes or paint it or however you're planning to finish it, spraying it with glimmer mist, whatever your favorite method is. 
but um, I just want to kind of show you how I would do that. Um, but this flange does fit down inside this gusset. You're going to uh, stick it down with your favorite adhesive, whatever method you want to use. And it ends about at the top of this fold line right here. By doing with this bag, by doing about a five inch, it, it's roughly centered um, in the bag. It's a little bit shorter on the top just because my tags stick out a little bit. Again, you'll have to adjust your um, dimensions depending on what size your paper bag is. Um, but it just makes a really fun way. Now what I did on this one, again, it's those little anal details. Whatever paper I used on the, the um, little pocket here, I also used that same paper on my flange. It kind of created a bit of a frame. So as you can see, here's one going the opposite direction. It's got the red. And you could put tags in here. You could put the photo mats, you know, whatever kind of thing that you want. I am going to be doing a kit with this exact uh, Can Company paper line in um, in the kit with a whole bunch of other goodies and tags and all that kind of stuff. And I probably will be putting that kit up on, on my Etsy shop and on YouTube tomorrow so you can have a look at it. This book is not finished. This just has the papers in it. It doesn't have any of the embellishments, any of that kind of thing in it yet. Um, and I'm going to be working on getting that, that part done. But... Um, it just makes it kind of a little bit different, different album. I like having the chipboard um, that the rings go through. You know, you could put um, eyelets there, if that sort of thing you want. But it does give something a little bit more stable um, for that to hook onto. One thing that I am also potentially going to be doing, let me pop one of these guys out of here, both for aesthetic reasons and just for um, handling the wear and tear of people looking at the album. At this point right here, as you can see, my adhesive, whoops, my adhesive is sticking absolutely no problem. But this tends to want to pop, this gusset wants to pop open. So I haven't decided whether I'm just going to put some adhesive down in that gusset, or I'm actually thinking of popping in a little tiny hole close to the edge so it's not affecting the size of my um, uh, photo map tags that go inside, and just popping a little hole right there and putting a little piece of either ribbon or... Um, uh, fiber there and it makes a cute little kind of dangly thing hanging off of there and it also is going to give it a lot more support for you know the stuff popping in and out of there so just an idea a thought when I get this album done I'll, I'll do a video of it and let you see it so anyway there is my flip paper bag album so you can go to my blog at following the paper trail .com. I put the photos and um dimensions and such up on yesterday on what's up Wednesday. So this is, you know, just a video of what's up Wednesday, uh, daylight. So I had so much wonderful response and thank you to all of you for my 12 days of Christmas projects that I decided to go ahead and continue it on a, um, weekly basis and they'll go up on Wednesday sometime, hopefully not as late as yesterday. Um, but I'm calling it what's up Wednesday. So, um, new project each each week. I'm not going to tell you necessarily what's coming up next week, so you have to tune in. Um, I would say, oh, I'll see you next Wednesday, but guess what? I'm probably going to have a few things up um, before then. So anyway, enjoy making one of these albums, and I will be talking with you soon. Thanks a bunch.